third we come to epistaxis in children bleeding from the nose is called as epistaxis right what is the most common age for epistaxis in children the most common age for epistaxis is 3 to 8 years epistaxis can be divided into two parts it can be primary also known as idiopathic which is most common and then you can have secondary causes where there is a underlying cause the secondary causes can have multiple reasons it can occur due to infections like viral nasopharyngitis it can occur due to chronic nose picking by the child right if the child has a habit of frequently putting uh, fingers into the nose so nose picking can cause it can occur as serious epistaxis can occur in vascular malformations like hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasias it can occur in hemophilias it can occur in von willebrand disease it can even occur in platelet disorders there is a long list etc and sometimes it can be a side effect of med drug use as well so drugs can also cause particularly children whose parents frequently put those steroid drops the nasal cavity the nasal mucosa becomes atrophic and even with my trivial trauma or sometimes due, due to simply child blowing like this it can cause rupture of vessels and cause bleeding from that so these are the common causes of epistaxis important point to remember what is the most common site the most common site is known as little's area little's area is also known as kieselbach's plexus it is present in the anterior inferior part of the nasal vestibule and this is the site from where more than 90% cases the epistaxis happens so anterior epistaxis that is blood coming anteriorly is more common than blood going posteriorly although posterior can be missed now potential mcq here what are the arteries supplying this little's area there are four arteries that you need to remember there is anterior ethmoidal artery there is sphenopalatine artery there is greater palatine artery and there is greater labial artery although the photographs may show you posterior ethmoidal artery also but its contribution in children with epistaxis is minor so if you look at the if you remember anatomy these are branches of internal as well as external carotid arteries and so sometimes epistaxis can be life threatening uh, another potential mcq one liner sphenopalatine artery its septal branch is also called as artery of epistaxis in children so which is the artery of epistaxis the answer will be sphenopalatine artery how will you manage these children treatment will require initially you will have to perform nose pinching with or without cold compresses so you have a child coming to you with epistaxis you will pinch the nose and hold it at least for 5 minutes with a strong digital pressure you can also put a uh, very cold drop nasal saline drops or simply apply cold compresses on the anterior inferior part of the nasal septum other than that you can also put topical vasoconstricting agents like oxymetazoline or topical phenylephrine drops in the nostril of the child they will constrict the vessels and decrease the bleeding in case it does not uh, stop then you will have to do nasal packing in case of anterior epistaxis blood coming out from the nose forward then you will do uh, anterior nasal packing in case there is posterior epistaxis you will do both anterior plus posterior uh, nasal packing how would you know that there is posterior epistaxis it bleeding will come out in the form of vomiting like child will vomit out blood in that because the blood is going posteriorly into the gut
so nasal packing will be done if nasal packing also fails then we need to get a urgent ENT consultation and the ENT surgeon will perform a surgical procedure the surgery can be in the form of either ligation or selective embolization selective embolization and uh, remember prevention should be done in the form of avoiding undue use of topical steroids topical all these vasoactive and uh, vasoconstrictor agents they, their routine use should be avoided secondly habit of nose picking should be avoided and thirdly if a child is having a recurrent epistaxis proper management of the child workup of the child needs to be done and fourthly if you keep the nasal cavity and the anterior part of nasal cavity moist by applying either petroleum jelly like vaseline and even in children who have infections or recurrent infections topical mupirocin has been found to be effective topical mupirocin is not only not only does it provide uh, a barrier it also decreases staph and streptococcal carriage which has been found to be associated with idiopathies epistaxis in many of these children so all these are preventive methods but it is more of a uh, acute sos based management that what you see in epistaxis and uh, being a pediatrician i can assure you those who are in practice would already know that epistaxis is something you will always have a patient coming to you a child coming to you with epistaxis subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from prep ladder